how you know it. I'm the man, yeah, I show it. From above, from Terrence Mann. Flex on the mall. I'm the man. Yup, he's here, Terrence Mann, joining the show bright and early. By the way, bright and early, because you're out here too, so thank you, first of all. Secondly, I'm seeing a Williams jersey back there. I'm seeing a lot of jerseys. Tell us about the wall. Okay, Lou, <laughs> settle down. <laughs> the Hawks. It's my dog. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I didn't move his jersey in the way for this video, too. I put the camera on. I was like, oh, look at this. <laughs> I appreciate but, uh, it. No, it's, a, it's just a wall full of jerseys of people, you know, close friends that I play with um, and some of my vets that helped me out get to where I'm at. I like that. Dope. I like the way it looks. It looks very cool. Uh, obviously, Lou was one of the vets during your rookie season. I can't even imagine the life lessons and wisdom that this man <laughs> imparted on you. Is Isn't there funny? <laughs> no? I'm, je je I'm completely serious. Uh, can you share anything with us? What was he like as as a as the old guy? Um, you know, he was a great vet. Great vet. You know, he taught me how to prepare for games. Um, you know, no matter what's going on in your personal life, I think he was the best at just getting ready and preparing for games. Um, that was that was one of the biggest things that I learned from Lou. Um, I learned a lot of off the court stuff, a lot of off the court lessons he taught me. Um, but yeah, it, it was tough being a rookie during that during that season, especially because we had the bubble too. Yeah. It was mm. we put T Man through the ringer. He took it like a champ. I know. Is there hazing? Like, how does it no, work? We, see, we we always we had the idea of never hazing. We wanted we wanted to teach our young guys to be be men. Okay. We didn't really we didn't really subscribe to the hazing, but we did run a tight ship though. <laughs> you know, we had some yeah. things that was non negotiable and. We we treated our rooks as a like as a unit. The you hazing shit is whack. Like, that's yeah, a, we we were never into that. Like we don't want our rookies to like because we never wanted anybody to think no. that you can push us around and play with us. So what we look like having T Man with a door to explore a backpack on or something oh, like cute. that. Oh, yeah, cute. We like, never subscribed to that type of activity. So we yeah. always just tried to give them some game. But like, so what 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 do rookies have we to had do? A, then? Well, we had a we had a pick snack food, we had a snack yeah. bag. Go pick up food. Fair enough. Um, Things of that nature. If something was requested, we expected it to be delivered. All right, yeah. that's not too bad. So. Yeah, yeah. Man, as long as you get it done, you're good. You're good, man. So if it was cool. Don't get it done. Terrence, this don't get it done. <laughs> yeah. get a little dicey. As long as you're a good a sport dicey. about it, I feel like you're fine. T-Man was the best. Yeah. Shout out to T-Man, Mir Coffee, all the guys. They were the best. By the way, I used to work out with Drew Hanlon this summer, and when T-Man was still at Florida State, he'd always come and he'd be in the runs. And it's fun to see how far you've come from those pickup games in the summer, just grinding while you're still in college. It's awesome to see how much you've grown, Terrence. But this year, you guys lost to the Mavs in the first round, and, and you're on record saying that guarding Luka is not fun, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't look very fun. What, what's like, what's the what's the worst part about going up a guy like that? I think because he he's just not too worried about the primary defender. You know, he's always he's going to play at his pace. It's hard to speed him up. It's hard to get him to do stuff that he doesn't want to do um, because he's just locked in on his game. And he's going to do what he wants to do. So. It's just tough, man. It's tough, and, and you think it's easy. You think you know he's going to get to that to that left hand and get to that step back, but, you know, sometimes he might pump fake. Sometimes he might get to left step back. You know, you, you might read it, and he'll between legs go back right and go by you. So he's just – it's just not fun. Yeah. <laughs> and we asked Marcus Morris this last week because he, he's had some battles with him, same as you. You guys – almost looks like you have a beef on the court. Is that just competitive spirit and juice flowing that? Because Marcus's brother says he's actually a cool dude off the court. He gets along great with him, but he talks a lot of shit on the court. So is that just part of the game? That's just who he is, and it sparks a little rivalry there, or what? Yeah, with me and him, it happened early on. It happened uh, my rookie year in a, in a preseason game, and I think we were in Vancouver or something like that. We were in, yeah, we were in Canada, and... <laughs> That's just when it started, and ever since then we've just been talking about this shit, that little shit. Every time we play each other. <laughs> hey, T, you and uh, you and PJ Washington had a moment as well when he looked at the bench, crossed his arms like he he wasn't scared of nothing. It was, it was whatever. He turned his turned his back on y'all. Walk me walk me through that. What happened? So uh, the whole okay. game, he was he was kind of looking over at the bench. I want to say he's probably looking over at Dante Jones because you know Dante Jones back there talking. Oh, yeah. about <laughs> sure. behind the bench. But you know, any any good play they had, anytime somebody else did something, he would look over at the bench and nobody was saying nothing. Like everybody was just you know taking it. We was losing, and he was looking over at the bench, talking smack, talk, ripping the ball out of people's hands. So I'm like, come on, somebody got to say something. This is crazy. We're not about to just let somebody come in here and do this. So. I just, you know. You taking you taking that that stance he took, y'all taking that in the next season. That's gonna that's gonna be on the 
That's on the, that's on the board. Yeah, we, we'll see. We'll see what sure. happens. Never forget anything. <laughs> anything. Um, obviously, all eyes on the Clippers. Congrats. You get to keep your coach. You got a brand new building. Now we wait and see what happens with Paul George and James Harden. For that matter, he can opt out and go out there and test the waters. Uh, if you had to guess, Paul George is going to be a Clipper next season? I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, but you never know with this free agency stuff, but I really hope so. Um, I think we had a great chance this year if we were healthy, so I hope we get him back. It's got to be weird. I mean, you got James Harden in that, too, as well. Like, you you know, you guys go about your offseason wherever everybody ends up during that time, and do you, do you talk about it, or is it just that's the business side? Let me know when you figure it out. I think for the most part, that's the business side, and, and you kind of try to leave it that way. Um, I don't try to hit guys and try to see, you know, what's going on. I kind of, you know, let them handle that part. But if I run into them, I'll try to, you know, have a conversation about it. Terrence, in your rookie season, you played for Doc Rivers, obviously now the coach of the Milwaukee Bucks. What's the biggest coaching difference between Doc and Ty Lue? Hmm. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Look, I had the not. same reaction to you. I just, I just did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not too much different. You know, they run the same things. They're about the same structure. Um, a lot of the same stuff going on. Um, I think just as a younger guy for me, it was, it was tougher to – to figure out how to get on, you know, Doc's good side or figure out how to, you know, have a conversation with him to where, um, you know, you don't feel stupid on the on the other end of it. You know, you come out, you know, he might give you some, some like, yo, you didn't do this, this and that. And like, dang, I was just trying to have a conversation, Doc. I don't know, you know, now my head's everywhere after this conversation. I'm a rookie, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, Ty Lue's more of a younger dude. He kind of understands the younger generation of guys and stuff like that. So it's kind of easier to, you know, have a conversation with him too. But um, they both run the same stuff and are about the same business at the end of the day. So it's not too much different, though. Yeah, I was, I was going to second that. When you play for T. Lue, it feels like you're playing with your – you're playing for your teammate, your homeboy, your brother. With Doc, it's more of a mentor, like a uncle or a dad type of thing. Like, Doc will call you on your day off. And he'd be like, what's up, everything cool? Like, right. you good? Life's good? Family good? Like, you straight? Your mental good? And with T. Lou, he'd call you like, hey, man, you straight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the tone of those conversations are different. And, and speaking of T. Lou, I remember uh, this year when it came out publicly that, it, it, that Russ decided that he said he, he volunteered himself to come off the bench. And you benefited from that um, and became a starter. That changed. Uh, to me, in my opinion, it changed the, the trajectory of where your season went and how well you were able to play. Um, walk me through that. What went through the process? Did he actually say, you know what, I'll, I'll be the guy that come off the bench? Or was that what was that in, in, eternal conversation like? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure from what I heard, he, he went in and because I think we went on a six-game losing streak or something like that. And I think he went in and was like, you know, if it benefits the team, I'll come off the bench. And, you know, as soon as he did that, I think we went – 30, like something and eight or something like that. Something, something crazy like that. Or it might have been like 28 and five, you know, as soon as he, as soon as we made that adjustment. Um, and for me, you know, they just asked somebody to play a specific role. They're like, you know, we need somebody, you know, if you're going to play this, if you're going to start, we need you to just catch and shoot and play defense and, and play hard. You know what I'm saying? Crash the offensive glass um, and just be a cutter. And I was like, you know, I could do that naturally. So, uh, you know, I'm ready for this spot. And it, it was tough on me early because I, I was coming off an ankle injury, um, so I couldn't do as much as I wanted to early on. But, you know, we were winning at the time, so at least we were winning. God, that, that losing streak seems like 700 years ago. We're oh, like, this is not going to work. We were work. on y'all ass, too. I yeah. ain't going to lie. We were <laughs> like, like, this You know what, though? Wow. We kept saying, though, we're they're gonna, when they figured out, though, they're going to be really good. We, we, Lou said that. Yeah. yeah you I didn't keep, say you that. You know, I'm going to keep it 100% Chandler with you. At that. first, you I was know like, what? I don't know if this is going to shake. <laughs> Looking back, you were all over the Clippers this year, and I was all over the Suns this year, for wow, sure. Wow. None of us had the Mavs, I'll tell you that. Nobody had the Mavs. Out of everybody, I still got personal relationships with the Clippers, so I always. You've been strong about it. And I A lot of those guys I played with, and I had champions championship aspirations with them. So I was living vicariously through them. I wanted them to see it happen. No, you've had their back. I, I want to settle this one. So I, I just feel like I'm going to go to my grave never having a real answer to this. The Kawhi Leonard funny thing. We've heard it. Uh, PG's <laughs> talked about it. You've talked about it. Everyone says he's funny. He can't be that funny. For the yeah. life of me, though. Hilarious. Though. Give us an example, please. Uh, it's just like, 
it's just stuff you just wouldn't expect him to say. I think that's the funniest part about Kawhi because, you know, he'll be quiet the whole day and then a conversation sparks in the locker room and then he'll give his input out of nowhere. And that's, I think, the funniest part about it. <laughs> we, I just but feel why? like... You wouldn't expect him to have that thought or that or say what he has to say in that moment. I think that's just the funniest thing about it. Is it like nerdy? It's got to be like dry like, humor. Yeah, like he's sarcastic? not going to stand up, grab a mic, and make you laugh. Like, I mean, not, like not. It depends. We, might, we can have a full-blown conversation for 10 minutes, and Kay might just look up and be like, hell no, and just go back <laughs> to his business. <laughs> and he'll just go back to He's like he, a character in yeah. a show. All right. <laughs> God, I'll never um, see your channel. Terrence, I can't believe my eyes on this next question. Is this true <laughs> that you carry a Rajon Rondo basketball <laughs> card <laughs> everywhere you go? What? Hey, I should have brought it down here with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was my next question. Is it all? Is it in your wallet? What's like, what's the backstory here? I've never yeah, heard of that before. Yeah, it's in my wallet. So, uh, I think like I was in eighth grade, seventh grade, or something like that. My girlfriend at the time gave me a, a Rondo card because you know I grew up in Massachusetts too, New York and Massachusetts. So everybody loves the Celtics. So at the time, she gave me a Rondo card, and I like the next day I ended up making the A team for some basketball tryout. Uh, for my city team, and I was like, "Dang, you got to be the Rondo card." Because the year before, I made the B team, so <laughs> <laughs> it got to be this card. So awesome. ever since I had the card, I just been doing this in basketball, like A yeah, team, varsity, you know, high major division one. I'm like, "Yo, it's this card." So I just yeah. left the card in my wallet, and shit, I'm here now. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't look, look, keep lucky rabbit. Yeah, we'll yeah, never keep know. That card. Keep that thing. I guess way, we'll never know. You don't have card. I have a Sean Elliott card in my wallet. You guys don't have cards in your wallet. I wasn't like a card I wasn't a, guy. Nah, I never had cards. They don't know, Terrence. That was WWF action figures. Okay, that's not. I can't I was carry that around. Huge loser. <laughs> you are such a dork. Uh, <laughs> Terrence, we mentioned earlier about how you're getting into arena. You're leaving crypto. Uh, how excited are you in that? And is it true that being a Clipper, I also got to ask you too, did they treat you guys differently? Because that's that's the Lakers gym. Like I, mm. I've heard people say that they treated Clippers players like slightly worse. Only thing that's weird to me is when it's an actual Lakers game, it's a little weird. That's when we get treated different. When mm. you guys play the Rockets, it's they're fine. They're yeah, nice. for the most part, I feel like that's our that's our arena when we're there for us. But when we play the Lakers and it's their home game, it gets a little tricky. Like our families have yeah. to park somewhere different. Some of our access That's is cut crazy. off. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird, but it's team yeah, it's, it's really on the family. It's really on the family. You know, the family got to go through it more than we do. Really? So everything's, everything's different for them when we play them. Get so a little how hyped way though out. going into this new Hell shiny, yeah. uh, you know, new arena starting next year? How hyped are you? Looking forward to that? Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped about that. You know, having our own space. Um, to be able to just, I think we're going to be practicing there too, so that's going to be dope. Um, we're just wow. going to take full advantage of that arena. Wait, but your locker doesn't change at, state, at crypto, right? No, you same, have same locker. But it's yeah. oh, is it the lesser? No, of like the family, family room no, is no, literally no. different. You have our own locker room. The family room is different though, from when you're a home team. Yeah, or you we don't have like a family. Terrence, they're just going to argue like amongst a, themselves. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh. This is, this <laughs> I never even thought about this. I know there's, but also there's, yeah, there's a lot going on. We appreciate you getting up early. Um, thank you so much, Terrence. Enjoy the offer. Sir, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for. We'll take a quick break, come right back.